Hello and welcome to the immune response. In this learning target, you're going to learn all about how your immune system works. You'll be able to explain this parts of this pretty complicated picture that you see here. And you'll see how your body responds to disease. Now, let me introduce you to some not so very nice guys, or girls for that matter. Well, actually, they probably have no sex, but that's a whole other story. Anyways, these are the invaders, also known as pathogens. And there's four main pathogens that you need to be aware about that are looking to harm your body and get it out of homeostasis or get it out of balance. And those four pathogens are the virus, a bacterium, fungus, like a mushroom or fungi, and then also a parasite, like this tapeworm that you see here. Now, thankfully, you have your immune system, which is made up of a bunch of different lymph nodes and your spleen and your bone marrow, which creates your white blood cells and your thymus, which is located above your heart, to help you combat it. any type of microbe that may enter your body, or pathogen, I should say. And this helps to avoid any disruptions to homeostasis. You can tell sometimes that when you're sick, your nodes around your neck get a little swollen. Those are things that are producing uh, these white blood cells that we're going to talk about in this particular slideshow. Thankfully, your body has a couple of lines of defense against pathogens that are trying to get inside of your body and essentially hurt you. Uh, the first line of defense is typically known as the things on the outside of your body. They contain your skin, your mucus, uh, your stomach acid, tears, and also some of the good bacteria that you can find inside of your intestines. However, if one of those pathogens is able to get past one of those first line of defenses, well, thankfully you have a second line of defense. And those second line of defense consist of what we call white blood cells. Now, white blood cells sometimes also go by the name of macrophage, and the purpose of the white blood cells are to recognize and destroy pathogens, or the bad guys, these microbes like the virus or the bacteria or the parasite or the fungus. Uh, you can see two different images here. The red arrows are pointing to the white blood cells, whereas the purple dotted arrows are pointing to pathogens. And that is basically your second line of defense. We're going to go into a little more detail about exactly how this interaction works and how these pathogens are destroyed by your white blood cells. But the first thing you need to know is that how your immune system responds and how it knows to respond. How does it know that pathogens are even path pathogens, for example? Well, it just so happens your body is really good at understanding and explaining and figuring out which cells are yours and which cells are foreign or invaders. And it all has to come down to these things called antigens. Now you can see on the surface of both the bacterium on the left and the virus on the right, um, they have these, these different shapes on them. Those shapes are actually uh, called antigens. And those antigens have a specific size and shape that can be recognized as not belonging to your body. And when that happens, an immune response is triggered and your immune system springs into action. Well, how does that happen? Well, what happens here? Well, essentially, when your immune system senses that this antigen is on a pathogen or an invader has entered your body, it creates these things called antibodies. The antibodies are these upside-down Ys that you see here in this image over here, as well as the, um, the antibodies down here. Antibodies are made by white blood cells. And what you should know about antibodies is that they have a specific size and shape. Each antibody only works with one specific type of antigen. And what happens is the antibody will bind to the antigen, and it's kind of like throwing up a flare or raising your hand and saying, hey, this is a bad guy. And when it does that, the other white blood cells can come and gobble up and eat and destroy that pathogen. So antibodies essentially tag the pathogen for destruction. And this is how your body knows that these invaders have gotten inside of your body. Before we continue, I quickly want to make a connection to other molecules inside of your body that are similar to antibodies. And those in particular are enzymes and these cell receptor molecules that you see here. One thing you can remember is that antibodies, and enzymes, and receptor molecules on the surface of the cell membrane all have a specific shape that are related to a specific function. All right, getting back to the immune system now. 
Another way that your immune system can prepare for diseases is by a preemptive strike through vaccination. Now, most likely every single one of you, actually I probably would guarantee it if you're in school, every single one of you, except maybe rare, rare exceptions, have had some sort of vaccination in your life. Vaccinations is another way to prepare your body for the invasion of pathogens. And what happens during a vaccination or the shot that you get, the injection, is you're actually being injected with a dead or weakened form of pathogen, typically a bacteria or a virus. Now these pathogens are not alive, they're dead or they're weakened in the sense that there's only parts of these, um, these uh, pathogens in, that are injected into your body. But your body doesn't know the difference. Your immune system still recognizes them as being different. And because of that, it still stimulates a immune response, or it stimulates the production of antibodies. So these pathogens, with their antigens on the surface, will stimulate antibodies, and the antibodies will then go and tag those pathogens, and your white blood cells will come and destroy them. And essentially what's happening here is your body is preparing for when a real pathogen will come along that is alive. And one of the greatest things about your immune system, maybe the most interesting thing, is that it can remember all of the different pathogens that come into your body. It remembers the antigen. It says, aha, I remember that antigen. I have an antibody for it. So the next time that pathogen is, is noticed, that bacteria, that virus, and that one that you were vaccinated against, it is able to have a more quick and fast immune response, meaning the antibodies can be produced much more rapidly, meaning that your immune system can get rid of those pathogens much more quickly. Now, one thing you may say is, well, I've had a bunch of different colds in my life. Well, unfortunately, for our immune system, is cold virus and other viruses and bacteria can change their forms pretty readily because there's so many different variations due to genetic mutations. Um, and this is the reason why you continually can get the common cold over and over again. But you can never get the same cold twice maybe a different form of the code. And the same thing is true of when you get a vaccination. For example, you may get something called the chickenpox vaccination. Chickenpox vaccination is injected into your body. It's a weakened or dead form of that virus. Your body makes antibodies against it, remembers those antigens, and the next time the real chickenpox virus comes in, it says, aha, I remember you, and I'm going to create these antibodies to tag, and then my white blood cells will destroy. Now, sometimes your immune system malfunctions. And your immune system malfunctions, for one example, is when you have an allergic reaction to something. And you can see there's all these different categories and classifications of things that people can be allergic to. And essentially what's happening here is your immune system is being fooled or tricked into thinking these relatively harmless um, objects, or the different really harmless things, like nuts or dust or pollen, for example, which really typically don't harm your body. They're not pathogens. But your immune system, for some reason, overreacts and re re responds by creating antibodies nonetheless. And as a result, this can cause itchy eyes or swelling of the throat, and in severe cases, can actually cause something called anaphylaxis, where your throat starts to close and you need to go to the hospital. Um, so allergic reactions are an overreaction of your immune system. Um, and asthma, so many people actually have asthma, particularly people in urban areas where the air, air pollution is, uh, or the air quality is not good because of pollution. Uh, you can have an asthma attack, and that's usually triggered by an allergic reaction to something in the air, whether it be dust or pollen or pollution. And what happens when you have an asthma attack, if you know someone who's ever had it, they have a hard time breathing, and that's because inside of their chest, inside of their air passages, you have these bronchial tubes that get tight. And they close up and get filled with mucus. And when that happens, the air isn't able to pass through them as readily. And uh, essentially, this asthma is caused by an allergic reaction when your immune system overreacts to things that aren't really that harmless. The immune system can also function because of a particular virus or disease that attacks it. One specific example that you most likely have heard of is the HIV virus, which is a virus that attacks your T cells, which is part of your immune system responsible for sig uh, cell signaling. And when this happens, your immune system is not as effective as fighting normal diseases. So it's not that the HIV virus will end up killing you, but it's that your immune system has a harder time fighting off normal diseases, and as a result, those can cause more serious problems for someone whose immune system is not malfunctioning properly. So the HIV virus can lead to AIDS, 
However, thankfully, in recent years, there's been some incredible research developments where people can still live very normal lives living with the HIV virus and never ever getting to a case of full-blown AIDS, which causes them to eventually possibly even die. So there's been some really great developments in the research field for HIV AIDS. Um, another way your immune system malfunctions is sometimes people need organ transplants. Now an organ transplant, let's say you have a diseased organ or the organ is not working well, um, you can actually get an organ from another human being and uh, survive well enough to live a normal life with that new organ. However, sometimes your own immune system, even though that organ or like that new kidney or that new liver that's given to you is there to help your body, your immune system doesn't think that it's there to help you. It actually thinks it's foreign. So in order to help prevent your, your body actually attacking that new organ, you can be given a drug called an immunosuppressant, which helps to keep your immune system at bay and overreact, stop overreacting from this new organ that's in place. Okay, so that is the immune system, the immune response, vaccinations, immune system malfunctions, and that is the end of this learning target. So study up on the immune system and go on to the next part of the activity.